Hello everyone. Pretty ladies. And uh, uh, driving around Antigua. And uh, what I would talk about. Something that's kind of occurred to me from talking with my other girlfriends and stuff. And it's this, this anxiety over travelling on your own. Oh, sorry if my camera's a bit wobbly. These roads are not the best. So, I'm going to be honest with you. When I first travelled on my own, I was very anxious. I was so nervous. And um, I was talking to my son about this the other day as well. And uh, actually, it, I don't think it matters what age you are. First time that you go travelling on your own is nerve wracking. Um, you know, the first time I did it, I went to Vietnam. Uh, I was absolutely terrified. Uh, you know, getting on the plane. It was. Uh, I was just. Hang on a minute, I'm going around the corner. Yeah, I got, I got to the airport and I just kind of didn't really want to go through with it. But I mean, like I did, and um, I got there and uh, I was fine. Now, I was on a group tour and, um, you know, there was other people there and there was a tour, tour manager with us. So I knew I was safe to look after, but, you know, some sort of silly don't feel your care. Uh, will people like me? Will I fit in? Will I be on my own? Will they all be couple? You know, we'll come back to some of those questions. One of the important things is that I was okay for the first couple of days as I was in Hanoi and I was doing, like, it looked, the itinerary was busy anyway, and when there was gas, I was putting it and got to do. So I was really busy then. I mean, I was. A little intimidated by her boy, the dog is like the road absolutely terrified me. I couldn't trust the road from here. The road was going to get run over. But, you know, I got used to it. But I got, it was about day three and I got to a way. And, um, I had a real serious wobble. I was, uh, I just, I just wanted to come home. And I called my son. And I just, just, like, in tears, I was like, I want to come home, like, I just, I just don't feel comfortable doing this, I really didn't feel comfortable. Uh, and, like, and he, like, had a chat with me, and he said, you know, you're tired, and he's all catching up with you, uh, have a, have a sleep, and see how you feel later on. And we didn't know what that is the thing, it's absolutely overwhelming, and it just hits you, uh, it's, It's hard to explain, but you know, I think I need to do it now. What was interesting? <clears throat> my son went travelling on his own. He went to the hotel to be driving to Trump to call. And he was in his early 20s. And he was exactly the same. I took the phone from the airport. He was shaking like this. Terrified. You know, he's after pizza. He's in his trees. Thank you, Santa. Uh, you know, he was, a, he was just the same as I was when I'd done it in my 40s. So we do think it's an age thing. And and also he called me on day three. Well actually he called me every day because he didn't know anyone when he got there. And uh, you know, he wanted to come home and I said the same to him, you know, you're you're tired, you've got a bit of jet lag. You were three kilometers. Ooh, hang on, pop hold. And you know, and I said the same to him. Just have a nap. Um, you know, you're tired, it's overwhelming, you're jet lag, and you feel better. And, you know, he really got into the swing of things there. When I went to visit him a couple of weeks later, he was, he was just living the life of Riley. So, I don't think it matters what age you are, whether you are 50, like myself, female, male, everybody's going to feel the same the first time you travel, whether you go on your own, whether you go in a group. It's you don't know what to expect. But you know, in life, sometimes you've just got to sometimes embrace the uncomfortable because the rewards are immense. 
I had such a fantastic time in Vietnam. And we went on to Cambodia as well. And I absolutely loved it. I can't wait to go back to these places. And if I had not got on that plane and, you know, been brave enough and, and stayed the course that I never would have had that. And I'm not saying that I don't still get, I'm not saying the pandemic because I'm not sure it's in very well. Look at you, kid. Wow. Can you see? Look at that. See? That's Willoughby Lane. Anyway, as I was saying, I think everybody feels that way. That's absolutely natural. Every time, you know, it's not like you suddenly get better at it. You know, for the next few times I went on trips, I, I was a nerd then too. But now... Oh, I relish it. I can't wait to get on that plane and get going. Like, it, you know, it's always a little bit, when you're in a new place, you're always going to be a little bit uncomfortable because you've got to get yourself used to the culture or where everything is. But once you find your feet, you really can embrace it. And honestly, you just learn so much and you grow so much as a person. I have to say, travel has been one of the biggest experiences in my life that have you know, made me grow. I feel much more humble. You, know, you get to see other cultures and you realise just how lucky you are if you're complaining about the weather, you're complaining about your bills. And, you know, there are people a lot worse off than we are in the UK. So, okay. I say embrace the uncomfortable and do it. Get into it. It's, it's smart. Now, what are the silly questions? So that, I'm going to now move on to like a sporting tour because well, these are where I started. And so an escorted tour is where the itinerary is already been set and you'll go in uh, with a company. There'll be a tour guide there. Sometimes it's someone from the UK coming with you. Um, sometimes it's a local person. And sometimes you have both. And she says that we have both once you get one of these. And uh, there'll be a group of people going with you. And uh, you go and visit the country and all the best sites. And, you know, In 200 metres, side right. You're not alone. You, you know, you, you know you've got people with them. Now, but that's, it, that doesn't make it easier when it's your first trip. Take you know, the next right. The, the, one of the questions this year is, Oh yes, ma'am. Hang on a minute. Just turning down this road. You know, one of the questions that I had was, what if they're what if they're all in couples and I'm the only one on my own? That's a very common question. And I am fair enough. Most of the tools that I've got that there's at least one other person traveling solo as well. And you, t you tend to match up with them. I tell you, I've met some great friends. I've met the best people of travelling. And, they, and you know, they're in the same boat, they're travelling on their own. So you kind of throw yourself together and uh, oh, go there, I don't want to hit him. And you, and you just, you know, so I've never had that issue. Now, yeah, there are tours you can do that are made for solo people. Uh, so you've got just you, part of the travel speed, and that's just solo people. And actually, a lot of the companies, Riviera, uh, Jules Byrne, are also doing solo tours now. It wasn't something they did so long ago, but they kind of embraced that and doing solo ones. Take the next right. But I don't think you necessarily need to do a solo tour because you, there will be someone on there with you. And if you for one kilometer, and even if you don't, you'll still get on with the couples. I mean, I've never had any issue at all. It's been absolutely fine. Um, now I've done a couple of the solo ones. I've done. I went to Uganda with just you, uh, and I actually went to China with just you. I went to China. That was the first one I did. I wasn't that keen on it. I was. Um, I actually thought, oh God, I could better go with couples. Oh, remember the lady, uh, our guy, looking down on the floor. He was telling everyone, this is not a dating show. It didn't feel a little bit like that. It was a bit 
sorry, that was well, I did make friends on there, it was good, but, we, but then, when I went with Just Jews a couple of years ago, down with us, I, I had a complete different experience, everybody was very lovely, it was a smaller group, and, um, I, you know, I, so I, I think they are improved now, you have to see them, you know, I'm going to turn you around, because it's you, but so I'll put those down your front, you have to look at that. It's that thing. Now, you want to see this. You don't have someone to go with you. You have to fuck up the courage to go. And that's exactly why I just have a my own. I don't have a partner. 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 I don't know why I use it because I actually know where I'm going. But I'm sitting just that comfort. Talk to comfort. Um, you know, if I didn't travel, I wouldn't get to see these things. I don't have a partner. I don't have straight, you know, a friend that does the same boat as me that can come travelling all the time. So um, I just think you just have to do it. Otherwise I wouldn't see all the things I do. Two hundred meters. And I see that I can see some absolutely fabulous things. Now I'm honestly going to get some kind of amount of blue. I've been up close with them, but you know, it was just absolutely, it was an amazing experience. I've been to lots of states, parts of Asia. I've been to the Great Wall of China. I've been on safari on my own. I, I come here to the Caribbean on my own. I get to meet so many different people. I um I, I just think I honestly you think right. if it's uncomfortable the rewards are better. Anyway, I wanna see where I've arrived because I better shut up now. But this is where I am. I'm at Half Moon Bay. Ah, wonderful. Look at that. Look at the colour of that sea. Right, I'm going to probably go for a swim now, so uh, I'll catch you all later. Sorry for all the rambling. So excuse the hair, I've just been on the beach, but let's carry on with our conversation um, about travelling solo and the, the thing. Like, you worry about that, you shouldn't. Now, one of the big one of the big ones is eating out on your own. Now, how comfortable you feel doing this continue for four kilometers. also really depends on how you do it at home. Do you go out and eat on your own when you're at home in your home country? I have to say that the UK is getting better but it's not always great when you go on your own. I remember when I went to US once and I was in New York and I went to this Indian restaurant and they actually had single tables by the window, not by the toilets or the kitchen. I'm um, looking out onto the street and I thought, oh, this is marvelous. Um, so I do eat out on my own and I do when I'm at home as well. If I, you know, if I want to go to a restaurant and, um, and then I'll go. It's, 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 the problem is, is that people look at you, and that, that's the thing. Is people think, oh gosh, you've got no one to go with. And actually, we're choosing to be on our own. We don't want your mindless chatter. We just want to sit here, eat a nice meal, and people watch. Now, if you can get over that, what other people may be looking at you and saying, and get on with it, like you do with most of your life when you're on your own, then there's no problem. We shouldn't miss out. Just because you've got no one to go with, just do it. Now, if you're worried about it, start doing it at home. Start going out for meals. Start small looking at about it. Go to Starbucks on your own. No, don't go to Starbucks. Go to an independent coffee shop. I don't really support the big chain where I can help out. I prefer to support local business. So go to a local coffee shop. Start going on your own. You know, sit, at, sit outside in the summer because it, it is easier when you sit outside. When you travel, you know, if you're really nervous about going out and eating, then stay in your hotel if you're in one. 
and eat there while you get used to it. But honestly, like in Asia, it's just fine because people will just talk to you anyway. It's a very different kind of our culture and uh, it's, it's nothing to worry about. So it's one of, it's one of those things, is, it's not comfortable to start with, but step into it, lean into it, start slow, and after a bit you really won't care. You'll just go there and you'll just have a lovely meal and you'll people watch and you'll have a great time. Now there's a, there's a similar thing is to go out drinking. Um, you know, if you want to go and have a drink. Now I don't advise going out and getting that slaughtered on your own. Especially if you're in a strange country. Because well, you just don't know what's going to happen, do you? You know, if you're going to get drunk, you do need a wing woman. You need to look after each other. If you're just going to go for one drink, one cocktail, in a nice bar somewhere, especially if you're travelling and you're thirsty and you fancy a beer, just do it. Just step into it, lean into it. I hate that saying, lean into it. Everybody says that at the moment, don't they? It's just, uh, I don't really get it. Lean into it. No, don't lean into it. Just do it. Just go and do it. You know, life is short, and we all have bucket lists of things we want to do. And if you're on your own, you really need to get braver, because you can't sit around waiting for someone to come to do these things with you. You'll miss out. So, they're the main sort of things I think people worry about. Oh, I'm walking around on your own safety. Again, it depends where you go. So, you know, especially if you're travelling on your own, whether you're going in, there, especially if you're going independently, actually, but even if you're going on an escorted tour and you want to go around on your own, do a bit of research into the area. Have a, you know, watch a couple of videos. See if it's what other people say. Is it safe? Have a look at the statistics. Now, Find the sort of sometimes like you think, I, I do think like oh, 100 meters to be straight. Sometimes the UK and the US, sorry, oh, big for oh, I missed that one. The people that come there, people make the sort of stuff they try and scare them. Like, oh, God, you can't go to Istanbul, it's so rough. Everything's oh, absolutely fine, I'm doubly impressed. Now I would take. These reviews with a little bit of pinch of salt. You know, of the have your wits about you. There will be straight. There will be no go areas. But no, we're not continuing straight. So that way is the wrong way. We know that. And you know, have your wits about you. Continue for two kilometres. Stick, you know, you know, obviously stick to the main path. Don't walk down somewhere. Like. So, for example, Cape Town, I've had one just, you know, like the hotels were saying you can't go out when it's dark because you're getting mugged just going around the corner to a meat pub. Oh, and I didn't, I didn't enjoy that kind of stuff. So. But in the daytime, we went out. I was with another, you know, I met a woman on the tour I was on, and we went out together. And we were just saying, oh, this is so uh, we were just sent, so we were like trying to get from Victoria Garden, Victoria Garden, um, to, what's it called, but a big bright place where, you know, all the bright buildings are and the spy shops. I wanted to get there, and so we were walking, and then when I, the maps were saying take this shortcut, so we looked down the street, so there's no one down there, and we're like, you know, no, we were walking the long way round. And that's what you do when you're on your own as well, is if it doesn't look right or it doesn't look comfortable to you, then don't go that way. Take the long way around. Go where there's people. You know, I've, I've never actually had any problem while I've been travelling. Touch wood. And I've always felt very safe wherever I've got. And, you know, if I don't feel 100%, then I just take an alternative route. The other good thing to have, make sure you have data on your phone. 
wherever you are. If you have the apps like Uber and Grab. So wherever you are, if you don't feel comfortable, just call. Call one of them. Uh, it's not the end of the world. Just call one of them to get you back home. But don't let, don't let me get a lot of you into doing this. Because I do also get a lot of people, a lot of friends say to me, you're going where? Is it safe? Well, of course it's safe. The UK has places if you want to go to. I've been to the right, right places in the UK that I would choose to go to again. And I don't feel safe there. And it's the same wherever you go. So, yeah, this way. In 300 meters, turn left. Act like you do when you're at home, and you'll be absolutely fine. So, in a nutshell, what I'm saying is, we all get nervous, we all have anxiety about stomaching off our travel tomorrow. We all have anxiety about eating on our own, not making friends. the next step. But you know, you will do. Oh, I was going to say, when you're independently travelling, you know, you don't have the luxury of finding friends on the tour. Facebook is your friend. So, four kilometres. Lots of groups now, expat groups, and local groups, and all that. So, make sure you are on Facebook if you, you use that. Anyhow, obviously, if you have any questions, do, do let me know. I'm happy to answer anything, or if there's any topics you want me to cover about travelling on your own, especially as a female and an older female. But I do hope that you, you do it. That's what I say to my friends, you just do it. You'll love it. Right, I better go. Uh, so, it's very fun. Right, I'll catch you all soon. Take care.